Welcome again to another edition of the Coach's Desk. And in studio, we have Dr. Olivia Rose Esperange. She'll be talking to us about sports psychology. And uh, we just want to remind all the viewers and subscribers to tune in, comment, make your comments below, and let us hear your feedback on this video. Dr. Rose, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to have you here today on the coach's desk. All right, Dr. Rose, just going to go real quick because we know that you're a very busy individual. So firstly, introduce yourself to the audience. Okay, so I am Olivia Rose and I have been practicing sports psychology in the English speaking Caribbean for the past decade. And I, I love what I do and I get the opportunity to do what I love and work with some amazing, talented people who are striving just like most people or other people to achieve their goals just in a sport environment so for me i i get to work i get the, the opportunity to work in this environment okay awesome and did you do sports back in your days in high school so i didn't compete in sports but I, I used to run when I was about six or seven and had one year of coming last and one year of, I don't know, luck or chance. And that was the end of that part of it competitively. And in tertiary, I, at a tertiary level, I, I participated in cheerleading. But, uh, Competitively, no. Have ambitions, though, to be a NASCAR racer one day. Okay, good. Well, that sounds good. That sounds good. I like to see when females drive real fast. All right. Why, um, why sports psychology? Okay, so sports psychology really added when I got the opportunity to complete my practicum experience at while doing my master's at the University of the West Indies, where I was placed with the sports department at the time under the Office of Student Services and Development. I was initially to work the football team, but I worked with the team instead um, under the supervision of Dr. Telora Reynolds at the time and Miss Grace Jackson. And since then, I haven't left. And now I work with athletes who compete in 13 different sports. Okay, fantastic. And which hall did you rep up by University of West Indies? Which hall I lived on? Yes. Say Taylor Hall. <laughs> So I lived on Mary C. Cole Hall as an athlete and as a resident advisor on Rex Nessa for the hall. So okay. hard to be a people that was also good. Okay. And of course, Rex the Brave. All right. So you, you're up for Rex and Mary C. Cole. All right. Fair enough. Um, why is it important for sports personalities to seek psychological aid? Uh, definitely. You see, the thing, sports psychological help is not just a one-off situation. And because of how many challenges athletes and coaches and sports personnel on a whole face in trying to prepare athletes for competitions, it's very important that the psychological and mental well-being of these persons are catered to. And this is part of what I do when working in this environment. So it's absolutely necessary. Okay, cool. Now, Dr. Rose, could you tell us some of the challenges that athletes face that you would have dealt with? Wow, so the challenges vary, although they may be just as similar to the challenges that every person faces at some point in time, be it you know, transitioning 
from one stage of your career to the next, be it relationship problems uh, or um, even, you know, psych psychopathological di disorders, whether it be personality disorders, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, and so on. Um, just a, rain a range of situations that will that the ordinary person, and I say ordinary because athletes are extraordinary people with some amazing talents, that so athletes experience challenges that ordinary people experience as well. And because of these challenges, again, you know, navigating these and getting over them, uh, using healthy coping mechanisms are critical. And this is why sports psychology and sports psychological services are important in the overall preparation of an athlete. Okay, fair enough, Doc. Um, could you share a success story um, without calling a name? Because I know that there is patient, Dr. Um, confidentiality. So share a success story. Wow, the success stories, uh, of course, no, we don't call names or, or team that we work with. But athletes and coaches would be better to do so, but we can't and we don't. Um, the success stories are many, so too are some of the failures and the uh, life learning lessons, as I call them. But one of the, the greatest success I think I would put in the list would be when I am able to see persons now interested in pursuing careers in sports psychology, especially in this region, meaning the Caribbean, because of the stigma that's associated with seeking psychological help and support. So when I see persons are interested, and when I also see athletes and coaches who were once initially reluctant or hesitant or avoiding um, <laughs> the, uses, the use of these services. Um, very, I feel like I would have accomplished something, you know, now to get their interest and to have them really follow up on using the techniques to their advantage. So that in and of itself is a huge success story, whether it is a win or a loss on the court, um, in the pool and the track, doesn't matter. Once I am seeing where awareness is being spread, that for me in and of itself is a success story. And the most recent success story would be the launch of the Applied Association, the Caribbean Applied Association of Sports Psychology, where we're trying to get professionals within the field from this region and cultural background to help athletes to become the best athlete that they can be but more so the best person and individual that they can be while we you know strive to exchange best practice practices and build the total athlete so that's in and of itself is a success story because most of the techniques and applications about sports psychology really come from different cultures and we have to definitely tailor make them to suit our context. Fantastic. And I'm I'm loving I'm loving it because it is clearly showing and stating that um, Jamaica is moving ahead with sports because we have some very great sporting personalities and it's good that we are integrating the sports psychologist on board to get some of the mental aspect of our games ready. Right. So could you list some of the sporting disciplines that you'd have worked with? Wow. So I, I'm going to try and I hope I do not forget anybody or any team. So I work with a range of uh, athletes and coaches who compete in individual and team-based sports. And uh, these include cricket, Basketball, netball, volleyball, uh, rugby, swimming, squash, table tennis, 
track and field. Oh my Lord. Thank you, God. I remember track and field. Um, and I hope, I don't think that's 13, but some sports, right? And even though, and I need to add this part, so you don't have to be um, an athlete to come to, to be a sports psychologist, but you need to have an understanding or a willingness to learn the different sports and the disciplines and their rules and be interested in people and how they advance and become and achieve their goals. So that's the key criteria there, you know, because people always say, oh, you don't play a sport. So that's not a criteria because there are many sports psychologists who play a sport or who competed um, in sports and the, the interest for people's development may not necessarily be the same as somebody who didn't. Now, of course, you have certain advantages because you're able to speak from your experience as an athlete, but with not competing competitively in sports or participating in sports, I still have um, my own advantages where I am willing to learn the techniques and the different rules, sometimes from athletes as well, and to show a genuine interest in their overall development. So, yeah, those are the, the sports, sporting disciplines that I would have worked with, some of them, actually. Okay, awesome, Doctor. Um, I am hearing that sporting personalities or athletes complaining that the COVID is affecting them psychologically and financially. What do you say to those persons? Well, um, so for professional athletes and different types of athletes will be affected in different ways based on this pandemic. All right, and that is a reality. However, this is the one time that your extraordinary talents don't separate you from everybody else because we are all going through dealing with a pandemic at this moment. So your mental resilience and your mental strength and just trying as best as possible to stay present, you know, um, still do, still remain fit. Of course, there are some aspects of your training that definitely will be impacted now because you don't know what you're when you're preparing for what you understand so yes training regime will be significantly impacted but it doesn't take away from you keeping a positive attitude from you being grateful from you you know helping out at home and getting to know other members of your family especially those that you spend some time away from because of work and traveling, well, traveling even more frequently. So, you know, those are some of the things that you can do. Yes, income is in, impacted. We all are impacted some more than others, but it's re what's really gonna take you over these hurdles will be your attitude, uh, knowing that nobody really has an added advantage so to speak, other than how they utilize uh, or choose to focus on what's happening and what they can do. So it's like, you know, competing and then a, a team will say, you know, it's like, um, the sun was in my face. So this situation is for you cope individually and collectively while you know doing so virtually as much as possible and being creative with what resources you have and just um being grateful really will make a whole lot of difference now and setting up yourself to compete very soon wonderful now doc with that said where can these athletes find you if they would be interested in getting some additional aid from you Okay, so you can find me at drlive.info at gmail. You can also find me at olivierkrose at gmail.com. And um, my Instagram handle is olivierkrose. Request to uh, 
book festival and visit my website at onrsportsconsultancy.com. So that's ONR Sports with an S consultancy.com. Wonderful. Dr. Rose, it was a pleasure having you here with us on the coach's desk today. And trust me, these information are invaluable. And we really appreciate you taking the time out to be here with us on the coach's desk. Any final words? Well, thank you so much for having me and continue to keep us connected um, in sports in the way that you are doing. And I'm just going to encourage athletes, coaches, parents, fans, and supporters to ensure that you take it a day at a time. Yes, your levels of anxiety and fear for the future will and as much as it is possible for game time, which will be soon. All right. Thank you again. And the viewers and subscribers, see you next time on The Coach's Desk.